60. Uh, amendment proposed, clause 48, page 57, uh, leave out the words as printed on the marshal list. My Lords, I'm, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, it's a privilege to speak after the noble Baroness. Um, to answer her question, uh, well, I will come to answering her question, but to give a blunt answer to her question, I haven't undertaken the consultation she refers to, but I'll explain when I get to that part of my introduction uh, why I think this stands on its own. Uh, my Lords, I strongly support, as I said at second reading, those parts of the Bill which facilitate the exercise of the right to manage on the, on, on the part of leaseholders uh, in residential blocks. Um, and, and there are several measures in the Bill which do that. Uh, I do believe that the right to manage is in some ways uh, the crucial key to unlocking um, the levels of um, dissatisfaction that some leaseholders have with the way in which their blocks are managed. So I'm very strongly supportive of that. Uh, but there is a particular issue which the Bill doesn't address. And I'm hopeful, as a consequence of, um, of my general support for this, that the government, contrary to my, uh, my remarks in earlier debates, that I will get a softer and more welcoming answer, perhaps even one of those answers to, to attend a meeting uh, from my noble friend on the front bench um, um, as a result of my, my proposal today. In fact, I have had a meeting with my noble friend about this. She may not recall it, but we did meet uh, last summer to discuss uh, this particular issue uh, with officials, and, and she was very sympathetic to it. So that gives me additional reasons for thinking that this might be a welcome amendment. It arises, my lords, from a particular case, but it raises questions of general importance. I will make reference to the particular case later on, but I, I, I want to address the question of general importance first. When the right to manage was introduced through the Common Hold um, and uh, Leasehold Reform Act in 2002, certain exceptions were placed on it. Um, and uh, as I say, uh, the government's intention is to, uh, to ease some of those restrictions, and I welcome that. But one of the restrictions placed on it was that the right to manage did not apply where the landlord of the building was a local housing authority. Now, I put two amendments down that are alternatives here, and this is why, coming to the point about consultation, um, both amendments would reverse that assumption. Uh, one of them would eliminate it entirely, and therefore it would bring within the ambit of right to manage all blocks where the local housing authority was the, um, was the um, landlord, including those that were within the, local, uh, the, the housing revenue account. Um, the noble baroness, um, um, Lady Taylor of Stevenage, uh, says that this could raise certain difficulties where you had a situation where, in some cases, a block had so many long leaseholders uh, that it was able to exercise the right to manage but would be left with certain local authority tenants within the block. Uh, and I also have experience of local government, as she does, and I recognise that she is correct in saying that there might be certain sensitivities about this. I actually think it could be managed um, and indeed it would be liberating in many ways for all the tenants of the block because in, the local authority tenants would also have a say in the management of the block. They wouldn't be excluded from it simply because they were local authority tenants. But recognising that that is a slightly daring proposition, I have put an alternative in place which would uh, simply exempt uh, local, uh, take out of the provision uh, local housing authority owned blocks where they were owned simply as an investment. Now, I have left vague whether that is a commercial investment or whether it is an investment held in the local authority's pension fund. And these are probing amendments, uh, and I'd be happy to discuss these issues with my noble friend, the minister. Uh, but there are cases of blocks, and I'm going to come now to a particular case, there are cases of blocks where local authorities have acquired property as an investment, uh, but in, in doing so, immediately, that immediately extinguishes the right of the long leaseholders, there are no local authority tenants, the right of the long leaseholders to exercise their right to manage, and I think that is wrong. In the particular case I'm thinking of, it's a, a block acquired by a London local authority, uh, uh, from a commercial uh, property investment trust, 
bought at market value as an investment, um, in which, in this particular case, the local authority, the new owner, were dissatisfied with the accounts which they inherited uh, from the previous manager. They have their own manager who manages the block for them. As a result of that, they haven't been able to put accounts, satisfactory accounts together for the last three years. As a consequence of that, they haven't had the legal standing to issue invoices to um, their tenants for their service charges. And they have been running the building's operating costs out of the uh, capital sums that had been set aside to pay as a sinking fund to pay for future um, uh, improvements to the building. It's all very unsatisfactory. It's a classic case of where, low, uh, where long leaseholders would normally exercise the right to manage, but completely arbitrarily they're precluded from doing so. And I think that is wrong. I think we should facilitate this. So at the very least, I would say, I think my noble friend should welcome that my amendment, my second amendment, uh, which I think is um, uh, 60, uh, 62, uh, and say that where a local authority acquires um, a property for commercial purposes, not for the housing of their own tenants, but as an investment, either in their own name um, or as part of their pension fund, then the right to manage would be restored. The financial interests of the local housing authority, the local authority, would be preserved as they are under the current arrangements. It's simply that the right to manage the building would be taken over by the long leaseholders, as elsewhere, and they would manage it um, in just the same way as they do in all the other right to manage arrangements that we're so much in favour of. Um, so I, I will stop at that point, because I think I've simply made my case. But I do think that this is a, a strange omission uh, from the current arrangements, and one that we now have an opportunity to correct. I'd be very happy to attend the meeting.